So, what's our topic today? Traveling with our puppy for the first time. Maybe not the first time. Usually it's gonna be the first time because once you've done it, you probably don't need to know what to expect and what you should be packing and what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. Um, so this is really designed for new puppy owners that are driving to pick up their new puppy and what you guys should be doing. When you're traveling in a car, there's obviously a few scenarios. So there's different situations. The quick and easy one, real fast, traveling to pick up your puppy in a couple hours, I would say four hours or less. Very simple. You don't have to pack a whole lot. Um, you just need to pack a crate. You need to pack a leash and a collar or a harness. Um, the poop bags, right? And pee pads, um, normal stuff, water, chew bone again. Emergency situation, you want some food, but you don't necessarily have to if you're 30 minutes away or you're during the day and you can stop at a Petco and grab something. So every situation is different. If it's an hour away and you're eight in the morning, you're gonna be fine. But if you're traveling at night, your car breaks down, you wanna be prepared. If you are traveling um, by car, either way, my suggestion would be that you bring somebody if you can, because two is better than one. Um, the reason for that is if you are driving um, for any distance and you're getting a new puppy, a lot of the things are the same whenever you're preparing and you come to the, pick up the puppy, all of that. But once you get in the car and you are leaving, if you have to instantly put that puppy in a crate by itself when it's just left its home, just left its family, just left every smell and scent that it knows, everything that's comforting to him and now he has to go in a crate um that could be a little traumatic bring somebody put that puppy in their arms because you don't want that puppy to be traumatized right off the bat and you want them to bond with you you want them to feel comfortable with you you want them to smell your scent so if you can bring somebody with you i highly recommend you do and allow that person to hold the puppy or take turns holding the puppy. If it's a short drive, fine, one person hold that puppy. If you are traveling long distance, okay? So we're talking, you're gonna have to stop in rest stops, you're gonna have to stop maybe even overnight, you um, have a long drive. A puppy probably can be just fine for three, four hours in a car. Anything more than that, you really have to stop. The puppy's gonna get anxious, the puppy needs to exercise, the puppy needs to potty, the puppy needs to eat and drink some water. Um, there's just not any way of getting around that unless you have a huge van and you put in pee pads or you bring a litter box and you let them just tear that place apart, which I don't know if that's the best option. So you have to find somewhere to stop for your puppy. I don't recommend that you take your puppy potty at the local rest stops on the side of the freeway. It's dangerous. Your puppy has never been on a freeway or a highway, right? They've never been at a rest stop. So everything is gonna make them nervous. Even different sounds, it's gonna make them nervous and spook them. And the last thing you want is that puppy to break free out of your hand and run across the freeway or run into the hills and just, it's just, an accident waiting to happen. So if at all possible, find a place that is not normally a stopping grounds for families with their pets. And so that means whatever you have to do to find a place, and I don't know what that place is because I don't know which way you're going. I don't know what, you know, every everywhere is different. But just if you have to stop at a rest stop or if you have to stop at the gas station and let your puppy go potty, do what you would do in an airport. Go inside the restroom, if they let you. Put a pee pad down, sneak that puppy in the bag. They aren't gonna know. And let them go potty there. Um, because you're better off not risking bringing something home. And that is why when I talk about, is it better to fly or drive? If you have a long 15, 16 hour drive and you have to stop 12 times, you have 12 chances now of that puppy either escaping or picking up something and bringing that home with you. And puppies are very susceptible to diseases that are out there when they're very young. So the less that um, they can be exposed to, the better it is going to be for everybody. So 
If you can't find a place, my suggestion would be to put a pee pad on the floorboard, put a pee pad in the back seat, in the trunk, in the trunk whatever you have to do to let them go potty, um, and try your best to travel at nighttime. So if you can drive at night, then your puppy is going to sleep a lot more than they will during the day. So avoid a full belly whenever you're driving or flying, obviously. Um, so you want them to eat a few hours before. When you meet with your breeder, you want to make sure that um, you either have your phone with your notes out or you bring a notepad or hopefully you already have everything you need to know about that puppy ahead of time. So that way you're not sitting there trying to remember things because I'll tell you, you need to know when they got their shots. You need to know when the next one is due. You need to know what food they're on. You need to know their, their feeding schedule. All of those things you should know in advance so that you're not sitting there trying to remember this stuff. But if you don't, then make sure that you um, get that in writing or take notes and have that so that you know what you need to do. So make sure that they get as much exercise as they can. Keep them up. Ask your breeder to do that. It, a lot of this is going to be the same whenever you're preparing for a flying or driving. Um, keep them up as much as you can beforehand. And so if you're picking up your puppy um, and staying in a hotel and either flying or driving the next day, then do your best to allow them to stay up as much as possible beforehand. So if you already have pets and you want to introduce your pet to your puppy during the pickup, my suggestion is to think again. You don't want to overwhelm your puppy. I know it sounds like a great idea, like it's a bonding time and it's a family vacation and um, it'll be great and it'll keep your puppy occupied. But if your puppy is not used to bigger dogs or whatever the situation is, they are going to get overwhelmed. Um, it could stress them out even more. Your current dog could get jealous because you are giving so much love and attention to this new puppy. Uh, your puppy could start bonding with that dog and not really care for you. There's just a lot of bad that can go with it. But the most important is you want that time to really bond with that puppy without any distractions, without anybody else interfering. Um, and so take that opportunity to take advantage of that time before you get home and introduce your current dogs. So after a little playtime, all of that, your puppy should settle in. Hold them as much as you can. Now, when you bring uh, a friend or a family member with you to bring pick up your puppy, you still should bring a crate. If you have a six hour drive, five hour drive, you're probably gonna have to stop for gas. You're probably gonna get hungry. You're probably both gonna have to go potty. If you have a crate, your puppy can go in the crate and you guys can eat your food on the road without that puppy all up in your face. So a lot of times we think, well, I have two people, we don't need a crate. Bring your crate. It is still a good opportunity to start introducing the crate. And even if it's for 20, 30 minutes, bring the crate. But thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you learned something and have a wonderful day. Bye.